Hi guys, KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila, where we are working to inspire positive radical social evolution by uniting mission-driven humans. I'm so excited today. We are welcoming health and wellness, absolute rock star, international varsity human, Tamara Costello. She's a specialist in Chinese traditional medicine and the CEO of the Tamara Costello Clinic in Lipson and Porto. She is truly forging new initiatives and taking new approaches to commonly misdiagnosed problems. She really gets into the importance of daily rituals, connecting to yourself, questioning a better way, and taking personal responsibility for your health. Of all the awesome human optimization, health and wellness conversations I've had, this has been one of my favorite, and she has told me things that I've never heard before. So listen in, lean in, get some really good daily rituals for yourself. Get excited that our youth are super receptive to questioning this new way and start to live a happier life right this second. Be sure to check us out wherever you get your podcasts and look for the video on YouTube. Cheers. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm super excited to be here today, as always. And today we are international. We have a human boss <laughs> that just landed in a whole new country, whole different country. She's got clinics in two different countries. She's doing the darn thing. Tamara Costello, welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. How are you? I'm really good. Well, today I'm in a hotel, but I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really cool. I love it. So I'm just going to give um, her quick bio and then we're going to jump right in because, you know, I hail from health and wellness and uh, we've got all the questions are, you know, we're, we're always trying to bring, you know, insightful, quicker paths for, to our young people on how to question a better way as far as your health and wellness. But uh, Tamara is a traditional Chinese medicine doctor and master oncology in integrative medicine she has four books she specializes in autoimmune diseases um endometriosis women's health disorders sleep disorders she's doing all the things but i am so curious on your path because you appear to me as a young human and getting getting becoming a doctor is not well, a, a quick path. i'm 40. okay okay i'm, I'm 42 yeah. so i consider it young <laughs> I, I am young yeah well okay, good. i have a, I, ha I have a 13 year old Oh my gosh. Eight year old. Yeah, so I'm not that young, but yeah. In okay. a way, I'm young, but I, I started to work really well. I, I graduated from traditional Chinese medicine school and university, of course, at 24. So, okay. Yeah, it's been a lot of years now. Almost yeah, all 16. business. <laughs> yeah, all business. Like, time goes by. Well, I wouldn't have guessed um, you had a 13 year old, a teenager at, yeah. at home. Um, but that's a lot of a four teenage, books in practice. A lot. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of energy. I think I, I eat well and I sleep well. Okay. So I think that's good right. for me. <laughs> well, you, you have the inside Intel. So I'm curious, let's jump right in. How did you go from like maybe traditional medicine into Chinese medicine? Like what drove you off the bat to really get into this totally different approach beyond what we're, we're, we're taught growing up? Well, I think it was my health. I was I was not healthy for a long time. I when I was a kid, I had asthma for a long time, a lot of diseases with concerning my my belly, and I was always with problems with my gut, uh, a lot of intolerances with food. It was terrible. Actually, in my family, it was a joke. They would say, when 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 we were on vacation, they would say to me, when was when is the day that you're going to vomit? Tell tell us that we're planning. <laughs> yeah, it, it was terrible. It's I was always sick, always feeling nausea, and it was really stressful for me. Um, and since I since I was like ten, my mother drove me to a traditional Chinese medicine doctor clinic. Okay. And I've been since then. I've been doing traditional Chinese medicine. So uh, for me, it's a normal and a natural path. And um, when I chose, I chose it because of the holistic approach. Because for me, they give me pills for a long time, and it doesn't mm -hmm. do nothing actually for my health. Um, it improves some symptoms, but in generally speaking, I, I I will still feel sick. Yeah, and that's the main problem. So I changed my diet, I changed my habits, and um, I did a lot of um, phytotherapy and herbs because it was I was really unbalanced. And and I actually developed when I was nineteen an autoimmune disease with my thyroid. I com okay. complete com complicated a bit. 
And, um, and one year later, I developed um, a bowel disease, complicated oh, okay. tube, which is an alpha immune tube, and one. And then I, I had to treat myself, so I just put, put my effort on it. And yeah, that's how I chose my path just to pursuing my own problems and then helping others. That's incredible. So I think it, that's, that's a normal way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we are exposed early on. You, did your parents, were they familiar with Chinese medicine or did they ever? Oh, no, they, no, they, never. It was desperation. It's, okay. it's helpful sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You, it's always, you know, you, you're just giving your kids things and you see your kid always sick and my belly and my tummy hurts. And he's like, it's, she's not making a scene. It hurts. You know, right. it's just like years and years and years of of, of discomfort. And at, at some point, something's got to give and you have to do something more because it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not enough, actually. And you, you're, you're with a kid that it's always sick and something is not, 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 not going to, to, to be treated by a pill, you know, right. and my mother was like, I'm going crazy with this. This is, this is leading nowhere. And then a lot of breathing issues and. I'm good. She's good. She was going crazy. Gosh, and then I'm my sure. life completely changed. Yeah. And then my life completely changed when I changed my diet. It was like amazing for me. And then um, everything started to change. And I, I was coping with my anxiety because I was really anxious because I was always with something mm -hmm. terrible. Um, and then I was coping with my anxiety when my thyroid completely exploded because it was been many years with problems. Um, and then it was perfect, actually. The thyroid was perfect for me because it was a disease that allowed me to pursue to pursue a lot of different things and to study a lot and to develop a lot of things that I work till today and with a lot of good results. We are 31 at my clinic at this point, and I'm very happy and thankful for the disease because it allowed me to do a lot of things, and it was perfect, actually. Yeah. Well, I think it's, and I hope um, anyone listening takes away a few things, even if you relate to these specific um, chronic illnesses or issues or not, I think the key takeaway is the approach. Something's not working, so you have to try another avenue. I know so many kids or parents or people themselves, we are just conditioned to go towards these traditional Western medicine, take a pill and you know it'll go away. And it's often just treating the symptoms and creating something else, but we trust the medical authority. So we don't really question anything else. And I really love that your family did that out of necessity because that's what I think we have to do almost with everything in our life now nowadays because we're getting for so sure. many things but it's just to question that better way and then start to do your own research and advocate for yourself because your parents listened to you they knew you weren't okay they knew you weren't just and, faking and it. you are responsible for your health that's really right. important because right. no doctor is responsible for your health and your kids health you're responsible right so this is the main thing they, they give you an opinion a good opinion or a bad opinion that's not the point but you, mm -hmm. you it, it's your choice is your your choice to listen and to do it it's not the choice of the doctor you're the parent you're the do you're the person who, who has the illness no matter what it's your re responsibility it's not the doctors absolutely well so and this I is really important yeah, I love that you just said that we're focusing a ton this year on Tumor and Tequila about leadership because we have to let go of the systems and blaming the systems, whether it's government or healthcare or whatever. We've got to take back that responsibility, that advocacy, and knowing that not only is it our responsibility, but nobody knows our bodies better than us. Like you have to start taking that <laughs> into consideration. And they say, oh, well, the doctor doesn't, doesn't listen to me. It's not the doctors. You have to find another doctor yeah. who listens. <laughs> Right, That's, right. Yeah, just find it. It's not just, oh, he doesn't listen and you just sit. No. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Go to yeah. the web. Go to wherever you talk to somebody. Go to the Instagram. It's so many information these days. <laughs> TikTok you know? doctor. So, <laughs> whatever, you know, just, yeah. just find it. Just understand it. Just just, just analyze it for a bit. And one, one really important thing is to analyze your habits first. Yes. Before you go to the doctor. Yes. Just, I'm feeling this. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> this is the first thing you you need to, to, to answer to yourself. Am I sleeping enough? Am I getting enough exercise? Am I eating well? My bowel are moving or not moving? Am I anxiety? Am I okay with my mind or not? What is happening to me? And then I go to the doctor. But right. first of all, you have to check yourself. 
you're not wearing like a baby with 40 or 50, like, oh, I'm not feeling okay. Okay, but do you sleep? Do you eat well? What's happening to you? This is really important. Yeah. Otherwise, you know what's wrong. <laughs> right. Well, again, I think, particularly in American culture, we are taught to go to the doctor, take a pill, and not take that responsibility. Not take, I mean, you just want this quick fix, this disconnected um, conversation of fix me, whatever, and move on. And we're so disconnected from ourselves and what we're doing on the daily that we're seeking this big solution. And oftentimes the answer is small. And I like that you say, um, you know, there's a solution to everything. Um, You just have to kind of look in, it says, uh, you believe that there's a solution to every problem, but that a lack of direction paired with overstimulus often makes a difficult makes it difficult to access those solutions so that's when you dig into your rituals and daily habits like you said i I advocate completely about what we're putting our bodies around food sleep the simple things um tell us how like you really got into like those smaller rituals did that stem from your childhood illness and then kind of breaking it down to like the small things for sure and the anxiety yeah i was struggling with anxiety because when you have a bowel issue for a long time the anxiety is building up because you know, you're with your your teammates because I was playing whatever uh, volleyball and and a lot of things, and I was with my teammates, and I have diarrhea four times a day. Now. It's yeah, stressful. You know, it's just like, and then anxiety is building up, and then small habits really change my life. And then when COVID, because I started to write this book in 2020, and when COVID um, started in re- Europe, it was really terrible, as in the US and in the States, of course. Um, and, uh, the, the patients were terrible. They were with insomnia, anxiety, panic attacks, completely out of balance, completely out of the center. And then the rituals actually begin to, to be a part of the routine in the clinic. We will tell them do this, do this, like little things, put your feet in the soak water with a a little bit of salt, listen to this music three times a day, little things just to keep them steady and to keep them connected to to the world you know because they were so afraid and yeah. it was terrible it was really stressful and i started to bring up some rituals that i used to to do when i was a child and when i was a teenager and then i started to work on another rituals that people people my patients started to say i did this and i feel okay and i started to put it all together um, and it went really well because as, as this day, we still work on all of the rituals and we still prescribe them as we prescribe herbs, actually, <laughs> to a lot, of, a lot of disease. Yeah, because the disconnection is terrible. Yeah. Disconnection yeah. is the worst disease of all. <laughs> Uh, absolutely well you i mean and the thing is the saying like how you do some things how you do everything so if you're just kind of taking a pill to mask this it's kind of like well are you just taking a pill to lose weight or to fix a relationship are you drinking to mask problems like usually that behavior kind of carries over to everything when you started first working with clients i don't know if the attitude in general is different in europe but were people receptive to this way of not so much taking a pill but trying no. things like no, how was that conversation it. yeah no they hate it they hate it they hate it no no, How'd you get them to buy it? it? To, to them, no, no, because they feel they feel better. Okay, they so they try it. No, they try it because they are desperate. Now, okay. now, this, now, now, I, I, now it's okay because now a lot of people know my my clinic and it's it's different. Uh, yeah. But um, in the in the beginning, they hate me, like yeah. they will hate me because I said to them, "You have to go to bed at nine p.m." and they will say to me. No, I can't. I, I will not go. I said, you have to. Otherwise, I can give you all the herbs that I have and you will still be sick. Yeah. And they said, I will not go. I will not go. And one day they were tired of being sick. And I said, okay, I will do what this crazy lady is telling me. <laughs> they will feel better. And I said, they will, will go like, I hate her. Yeah. You know, it's like evidence is terrible because when you feel better, you cannot go back. Right, right, right. Because once you see it, the There's no way, but I mean, I'm and and I I normally I'm I'm really good at, at explaining to my patients what is wrong with them. I really explain to them this is wrong, and I'm I love physiopathology and I love internal medicine, so I really explain to them everything that's going on, so they know. So I take the time to explain to them like this is going on, like this is going on. I have to do this for this, and so they don't like it, but they understand it. And when they understand it, they are in control and they understand what they're doing. And when it's like this, normally they will do it. They will hate it, but they will do it. And then they will feel better. And then they will be worse than me. 
Then I will say to them, you can eat whatever you want. No, 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 I will never eat that again. <laughs> yes, it's yes. really funny. Yeah. Well, I think that b the initial buy-in is so hard because there's that natural resistance, especially as we get older and we're unfamiliar with things. But what I love is the younger generations are seeing these things and these alternative paths earlier. So I think there's less questioning. Have you Beautiful. noticed Yeah, that, you, that young people are buying in easier or they're seeking you out? At this point, actually, at this point, we have 50%, 15%, one, one, one five, that my patients are uh, below 10 years old. Oh, wow. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. And we have a lot of babies. Okay. And is it because their so, parents yeah. knew you or how do they find you? Like, how does this conversation what? even come up for them? Yeah. So the babies really important too, because they have food allergies, a lot of symptoms with respiratory yeah. diseases, and we have a lot of babies, a lot of, a lot of kids. So it's beautiful actually. And did it's their parents, amazing. did the parents find okay. you? Had they come from you before? Had they worked with you before? How do they know to find you? Normally, no, I don't do kids because I do oncology majorly and I do onc oncology or autoimmunity, but I have two of, of my traditional Chinese medicine doctors who are pediatricians okay. who do babies. Um, so normally they are, normally they are from the clinic or not or they will see it on some somebody talks uh, and word of mouth yeah. that we have yeah word of mouth it's perfect and with kids is really easy because they are really unpolluted so it's yes. super simple and they <laughs> will just respond and react yeah, unpolluted yeah, yeah. They, they will respond and react so quickly and the parents go it's really cool because it's yeah. quick and it's easy and they are just fine and it's easy easy yes. peasy i love really it cool I think stuff like that, I hope it gives me like faith in our future internationally, the whole world, because if our kiddos can recept and be open to something like this, I think they can be open to all the things we have resistance yeah. with as adults, culturally, socioeconomic status, I mean, whatever it is, all these things that we hard drive, I think they won't, they'll just accept the way it is and, and create their own reality. So I just and they go to that and they go to Twina massage. They will go to Chinese massage okay. and I do, I do a lot of acupuncture with kids. Sometimes they call me and I, because I don't, I don't hurt. So they, I don't, they don't feel pain. So it's really cool. And they, they like five years old, they are in this, they, they are lying down with some music and the essential oil and with oh. a, a puncture is beautiful. It's, <laughs> well, it's, it changes their trajectory of their mental health. Cause they're learning these Completely. strategies at five yeah, years old. Have, yeah. And they have places to lower the anxiety. I have a lot of patients, yes. not me, my clinic, a lot of patients like eight years old, nine years old, seven years old, who are there weekly to lower okay. the anxiety. And we do foot massage and we relax them and we do acupuncture and we do herbs and they just love it. That's they so awesome. close their eyes and they're enjoying it. It's amazing. It's well, amazing. Not, only, not only do they feel better, they're learning these lifelong skills to, to yeah. cope. Um, but yeah. you're also disrupting big pharma. We're getting kids off Adderall. We're getting, and I think there is a place yeah. for some of these things. They will but, hate me. Yeah, I know. Well, that's okay. We're here. We're here for graceful disruption because that's what it needs to be. And it's not really even about the fight. It's about helping people authentically get happier. Yeah. And there's space for yeah, everything. But, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. They, because this cannot be the only way chemical right. drugs can right. be a way and we can work with chemical drugs and they can do the massage as well and they can do the acupuncture as well and we can do herbs as well not a problem but maybe you can do a lower dose of yes. Adderall maybe yes. we can do one fifth of the dose and we can do herbs and we can balance so I think this is the the way to the future I, I hope chemical so. and more and more balanced yeah. Well, and, so. and do your young people, but all your patients, do they really, cause I'm a long time athlete and I had tons of teammates that struggled with IBS or bowel issues. Uh, not only cause they had, you know, they were sick, but like just anxiety of playing, like it's really hard to compete at a high level. Um, and we didn't have good answers back in the day of how to treat, I mean, really anything, but now when our, our kiddos are getting it so much earlier and they can bring this in again, I think this goes to, they'll graduate. They learned how to do this through sports, but now when buying a home, they can check through a couple loan officers or they can, you know, find other ways of funding their, like you can just start to change everything in your approach to all things. Um, when you learn it's this, easier. Yourself. it's easier and you can have, if you learn coping mechanisms, Everybody feels the same things. Right. Everybody feels the same range of uh, emotions. That's normal. That's human. The difference right. is between the coping. Yes. The tools you have for the coping. I know. I wish that's the thing that differentiates people. I, I wish you 
you you need to be in our elementary schools teaching our kiddos seriously at a young age in the school curriculum yeah i know I, well i teach my kids and her the, the friends of my kids are always at my house and they are all i'm really strict but they love me but <laughs> and i'm yeah because it's important you know yeah I, I think it's important to 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 allow the kids to express emotions even if we don't we, we don't like to hear them absolutely it's important I think it's I think it's huge. You have I mean, I do think everything on the home front, like the grassroots, what you're doing in real life is the big thing. But you have been um, you're featured on a couple shows. You were in Men's Health. Tell me about some of like this national exposure. We've had the platform to really share like your passion and your gospel and your why. I think I think it's important to I don't know I think in Portugal it it's, it goes really well and in Europe in general. So I think it's important to share because I think everybody in the world has the same problems. Yeah. No matter what kind agree. of <laughs> I think it's everybody is the same. No matter where or who you are, it's the same. So I think and I started to understand that um everybody is the same. So I I I started to spread out a, a bit of the words and it started to yeah, everybody feels the same. Everybody feels connected to the things I say. So it's yeah. it's cool. <laughs> I think they well, like it. So yeah, I think they 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 like it and they feel that I that that the things I said um, and and I say and I always uh, put my audience to hear it in Portuguese and English and Spanish whatever. Um, I think everybody feels connected and everybody feels uh, the urge to to change the habits and the urge to do something for the health in a holistic way and in the day to day basis, which is the opposite of the pill. Yeah, so I think. It's the um, it's the future, and I'm happy that it's going well. I I love that you're on the forefront and you're leading it because I do. I think 2020 for everyone in the world was a breakdown, and the breakthrough was this appreciation for the disconnected that the disconnect discontentment and disconnectness that we felt. So then we had that greater appreciation when we could be around our family, our friends, our community. Yeah, but 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 a lot of a lot of people are still struggling. For sure, for sure. But I do think we that's the when clinic. they start to question that better way or question a different way of what else can I do? Question is perfect. It's the yeah. start for everything. Right. It's the start for everything. I don't know what I'm doing perfect. You're in the perfect spot. Let's go. <laughs> Let's begin. Yes. <laughs> now yes. we begin. Yeah. So well, do you think it's hard for people to get to even that space of saying like, I don't know, because kind of seizing control as we get older and just charging ahead and doing more and kind of just like, you know, going day to day, yeah. and staying disconnected. Do you think that first step is the hardest? It's really the hardest because, you know, at, at 40 or 50, somebody went, went to my clinic and said, well, I, I, I don't know what I'm, I don't like my job. I don't like yeah. my home. I don't like my clothes. I, who, who is this shit? Who is, I'm sorry, yeah. who is oh, this person? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who is this person? Which is this persona? Which, what the hell am I doing? You know, this is nothing to do with my, with my, my soul, with my, nothing to do with me. What am I doing? This right. paying the house, two dogs, five kids, three kids. What is this? And yeah. this is really difficult yeah. to be able to have the courage to look and say, I don't like this. I don't like my job. I don't like nothing. I just, I need to change everything. Yeah. And this is really difficult. This is, whew. and when you do this, this is the first thing. Maybe you like your job. Maybe you like your spouse. Maybe you like your kids. Maybe you like everything, but you need to disrupt a bit just to be able to, understand, engage, and be connected to yourself. But this disconnection is really important just for you to put it all in question. Just do I like this? Do I love it? Who, who am I? What yeah. am I doing? This disconnect to connect is really, really important. It's like a computer is not, not working. You have to reset it. Yes. Yeah. It's the same. Do you think every human at, uh, goes through this phase at least one time in life? I hope. I hope so too. Yeah. Yeah. Because if not, something is definitely wrong. Well, I think you're just numbed out. I think that's why you <laughs> see alcoholism and, you know, drug abuse. And we see mental health um, issues higher than ever and younger than ever. And a bunch significantly amongst like our D1 athletes. There's so much pressure. I mean, mental health, I think it's, of course, always been there. We're just talking about it more now. But I do think it's exponentially worse than it has been in the past. It's worse. It's worse. A lot okay. of pressure and social media and everything. It's like, yes. 
Yeah. It's like a, a stress and a lot of, a lot of isolation and loneliness. Mm -hmm. People are alone. Yeah. That's a fact. They, they are alone. Yeah. They are not with themselves. That's the main thing because they didn't learn to be with themselves, which is a main issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're always outside with a lot of noise from outside with a lot of chaos. And when they are alone with themselves, it's like a desert and silence and this is difficult for yeah. a lot of people. So yeah. they don't enjoy their company. So it's really yeah. difficult. So this is a, a, one thing that you have to teach your kids to be with themselves. Yeah. This is really important. <laughs> right. A lot of people with 30 and 40, they don't master this. So this is a really important skill. Um, and then you have a lot of pressure because it's a lot of noise, a lot of noise from outside yeah, and a lot of, a lot of silence inside. So it's difficult. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, if you, if you never really had to sit still, I mean, thankfully sports kind of made me when you, when you're not doing something right and you're practicing every day, you're changing your food, you all that you change to change everything, the higher the level that gets, cause you just have to be more competitive. And more and more, I had to just sit still and sit with it. And thankfully, that was because of sports, not because of like my it internal calling. Yeah, but but it, it lined up. But I really do think people are getting that um, more and more now to to be with yourself and have alone time. And as kiddos, you play by yourself doing blocks or whatever all the time. Like you learn that you should, as a young human. You should play. Nowadays, after the COVID, the kids are not yeah. really cool at playing by themselves because the house was full of people and, and okay. they are coping with playing alone, which is a problem. Yeah. Interesting. So they do are playing with their tablets. Yeah. Well, again, and then you insert mm. the screens early. Do you do any sort of like, um, I know obviously you're a doctor, but like sort of like parent coaching or advising or counseling? I don't, but I have two, I have two psycho psychologists in my clinic who uh, okay. they are, of course, we are integrated. We do integrative medicine. So we, I have a lot of specialities when we work all together. So okay. if you go to my clinic or if you have an online appointment, we will see you. Normally, I, I you, you will go with me or we go with another doctor. And then normally we are two or three. Uh, with different appointments with you um to have everybody is giving you a bit so normally yeah. they go to the one traditional chinese medicine doctor and now and then another session with a psychology and we do all together oh, so that's normally amazing. yeah that's so amazing. important I, I wish we had more of that because again I, as an athlete this drove so much of my journey in like human optimization because you've got to get all the corners and if one thing's out you know mental health's out physical health isn't going to work and vice versa but i had to get my you know practitioners or doctors or whatever to work together so the fact that you have that in one place and you guys are working together because yeah. it does take different people in different specialities to yes work we together. are 31. okay yes wow. That's amazing. It takes it takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of we have to talk to it. I'm I'm yeah. the director so I have to talk to everybody, but they they are all talking to each other all the time. It's crazy. Yeah. We are well, all the, talking Sunday, Saturday, every day. Ta, 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 ta. Yeah, it makes this so much this sense. Fashion, this fashion, this fashion. Do you, oh, it's really cool. I love it. <laughs> for some people maybe that aren't as um uh privy to maybe the health and wellness journey and like acupuncture and whatnot or why having different specialists, they might just have like a primary care practitioner's one doctor. Can you tell people maybe why that's so important? Like if your knees hurt, then it hurts your hip, like how all the things fit together? Because you want, you have to understand that the body, the human body and the human mind work together. Every emotion that you have it's biochemical. So you can test it on the blood and you will see it. The fear is biochemical. Is your amygdala, which provokes it and your cortisol levels go up and your adrenaline is pumping up. So everything that you think you feel, and it's on your bloodstream. It's not an idea. It's physical. It's biochemical. So everything is connected. <laughs> And this is all so important and everything that you think, feel, and the biomechanism, bio it's all pushed by food and sleep and habits. So if your knee hurts, stress will increase, inflammatory antibodies will increase. It will go to your bloodstream, 
it will go to your liver, it will go to every, everything is connected. Your body is not isolated. Right. Everything, everything, every little thing that, that, that hits your body, it hits the whole. Yeah. It's an important through your mouth, through your nose, through your mind, through your skin, everything from inside out and from outside in. Boom. If it touches yeah. one part of you, it touches all of you. Yes. Amen. Write that down, everyone. Yes. I, I will Amen. say this. I yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, my biggest challenge, honestly, have been like my parents and grandparents when I see the stress and the generation before me of like, just do more and work longer hours. And I'm like, you got to just relax or meditate or some of these things. Well, that they are, like, have to sleep. They have sleep. to sleep. The sleep I, is terrible. They are yeah. terrible sleeping. Well, and, People and are just, terrible sleepers. Oh, for sure. Well, it just hasn't been talked yeah. about, but, but getting the idea to connect that, you know, your, your emotional issues are making you physically sick. It's been such a challenge for me, for a lot of people really need to understand that. Oh my God. So, well, normally I, I explain to my patients, when you feel the emotion of fear, what do you feel? Where do you feel it? Stomach. Yeah. What do you do with your, with your body? You see your body reacts to the emotion. Yeah. So if you repeat this emotion, your body will repeat the emotion and it will get tired at least because it's repeating, but uh, it's tired and completely disconnected and broken and tense and contractured and it's terrible for you. Right. It's like right. you're always on a shock. It's always, oh, this is violent for you. It's like you're in a shaking machine. And they normally understand. Okay, I'll tr I'll try that. I'll just so, tell them to listen to this and then listen to you because they might. Yeah, just, okay. I don't think I don't think family listens to family anyway, so <laughs> it's better just to like, yeah. go say. That's, they can that's true. That's true. I said to my mom things, and then she doesn't like to this stuff. Ah, okay, I will I'm do gonna... it. I will do it. I know. I will do it. <laughs> that that's our cardio right there is trying to explain things to family. Yeah. But well, so tell us if if you're not in America or if you're not traveling, um, you know, or or, or close to Tamara, where you can go see online, her online, uh, online, go online, and well, tell us about the book, the power of rituals and the little things you can do yeah. each day. Because again, I, we've got a diversified audience of all ages, but I think our young humans are super open to the daily practices. I started a morning routine about two years ago, and it stuck like gold. Um, and I firmly believe in all these things. But but hit us with your rituals. Okay, so my rituals are a bit, a bit strange, but I will tell you the rituals that normally everybody loves, and it has a big, a big impact and takes you about two minutes, which okay. is good. I like things with small doses of time and big impacts in the life. So normally the the ritual that I love the most, which I use every day too, is the word of the day, um, okay. which is really important, and I do it in my bed. Okay. So you go to your, you, when you wake up, you're in your bed, hopefully. Um, and then you, when you're waking up, you wake up before you go to go up and do the things. You just breathe for a bit, like one, two, three times. You just focus on the word of the day. Normally the word, it's not one word. It's an idea. It's a feeling that you want to be, want, want to be, or want to feel, um, during the whole day. It can be today, if you have a big, big day with a lot of emotions, I want to be steady. I want to feel centered. I want to feel strong. I don't want to, you know, it's just like an, an idea that your brain has to follow. The brain is really good at that moment when you wake up because it's still a bit numb. So you mm -hmm. can give it ideas and it will stuck. Ooh, if it, okay. it's a bit, yeah, yeah, it's really important. You have to be like, when you wake up, like may a little bit, bit dizzy, then you give it ideas like you put it ideas and then normally it will it will work really 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 good because your subconscious it's more more open in that area when you wake up your conscience is stays stays with your brain and you cannot you cannot do much when you're in that state you can just put it ideas and the word of the day or the feeling of the day is really important so you can get focused, you can get a lot of energy, you can get, I have to be strong, so I have to be assertive, I have to be whatever. I need to feel this, I want to feel, and you do it and it works, it's power. <laughs> because it. it's your brain, you just put your brain yeah. to work. Yeah. And you, it's like one minute and you breathe in and you just, you just focused. It's not like a, a faith thing, it's just like an idea, you just give it an order, like you're ordering 
something like it's going to happen. You know, you order your brain. Today you're going to feel this. Then you repeat. Today you're going to feel this. The whole day you're going to feel this. And then normally it will go really, really good. And then you tell me when you, when you try it. But you have to be busy just to okay. give it the, 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 the thought. I like it. This is really important. So, yeah, me too. And it works perfect. What, what, and what then, was your word um, today? That's my word today? Yeah. Oh, or feeling. today is my, my feeling today. I have, I, I hate to fly. Okay. So today <laughs> I fly every other week, but I hate oh. to fly. And my word wow. of the day is to be really, really strong and not to have anxiety. Okay. And it works perfect. Okay. Actually, it was a beautiful weather today. So I don't know if I cheated a bit because it <laughs> you put beautiful. it in the universe. Yeah. I put it in the universe, but it it was perfect. No, normally in the days that I fly, uh, I just I focus on the flight. Okay. So normally <laughs> it's normally always the same word. So, but it, it's it, it, it was good. It was good. Um, but normally my words are words of um, focus and center, and to be able to listen. This is normally the thing that I say to to because when I have a big days, I normally say, may, may I be able to listen to all of the words that my patients are saying, to be thoughtful and to be focused and to be there and to be present and just to be there listening because listening is really important in the, the appointment because all the people, the, I'm not in their body. So right. I have to be really, really, really listening. Yeah. because they are explaining to me the disease they are explaining to me all of the things that's happening and i have to be a detective just to understand everything they're saying um so normally that that's a word that that's one that i use a lot of times just to put my mind it's in that place then not to be distracted by other stupid things that happen yeah um and the other rituals that i that i love it's a ritual that I always do um, with my patients in the lunchtime or tell them to do, uh, which is the three things ritual. It's when you stop at lunch, when you finish your lunch, if you're working or not, it's your sit, you breathe seven, eight times. You have to breathe like 30 seconds just to be centered for a bit. And then you ask, how is my heart today? And normally it has to, yeah. How is my mind today? How is my body feeling today? And you have to have a word for each. And if you're not finding it, you have to breathe again and then you have to understand. Normally your heart has an emotion, your brain has a thought, and your body has an ache or a relax or something like this. And it's just a connection, just to understand how is your mind, how is your brain, how, how is your mind, how is your body, and how is your heart in terms of your big connection to yourself. Because normally we have 12 hours and we don't think of ourselves at any time. So this connection is really important and is grounding you a lot and lowers anxiety and lowers cortisol and lowers uh, everything that is this movement of the daily basis and the daily routine and just put yourself in conscience of yourself, which is really important. I love that. And I love and this too. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did you, are these all like original rituals you came up with or did you have mentors yeah. along the way? No, you no, 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 no. Okay. These ones I, I make, no. Okay. It was suffering, man. It was suffering. I, I believe yeah. it. A yeah. lot of anxiety in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of, I don't know how, how big you are into like energy or universe or things I'm sure that you are, but, um, it's kind of funny. I always think like we are who we're supposed to be at a young age. I always say like zero years old. So of course you were sick and it was like putting you on path very early. Do you find like when you then got still, like then the rituals, everything just kind of came through and it was just clear. Completely. Normally, normally I come through when I'm writing something goes through and I was like, Oh, all right. I just accept it, you know, just, okay. Yeah, yeah. I go there. If you want me to go there, all right, let's go. Let's do it. I just, I just accept it. Normally, yeah, things yeah. come through and I just, yeah. Yes. And I feel my body. I think this is, has to do with connection Yeah. also. So Absolutely. um, I think the connection, your body tells you in a way what to do. Mm -hmm. You just have to connect to them. And normally we are used to look at the symptoms as something wrong 
which actually is something wrong, but it's also a way of your body expressing and connecting to yourself and saying, well, something is in balance. Please look at this. So it's not, it's not just something wrong. It's something that you have to look at it and pay attention and be empath empathetic and look at it and give it space, you know? So yeah. it's a way to communicate. Yes. So this is really important. <laughs> I've done so many things from neurofeedback, brain stuff, to brain mapping, to medicine and turmeric and tequila, everything in between. We've tried it all. Um, thankfully, turmeric between, and tequila is perfect. It, that, you know, it's the balance because you can't be all on one side of thing. But no, of course. Yeah, it's been so cool to like, it, but the thing is of all the research, everything I've done, and I've had incredible humans like you in my world that I've been so privileged Thank to have you. access to. Um, but then it kind of comes back to, and this is what my smartest humans say, all answers are within. If you're listening and you're connected, like it's, it, it, it took me forever to believe in it. It's still kind of a process, but um, is that Rituals. something we talk about? Rituals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Normally okay. your body, that's why I was telling you that I always have to listen to my patients. They're normally telling me the problem and the solution. Yeah. They are okay. normally telling me the problem and the solution. If I just listen. Yes. Of uh -huh. course, they're not telling me the, the herbs and everything, but they are telling me <laughs> the problem and the solution. You know, they are telling me what to do, what yeah. they need, yeah. because they know what they need. They are in the body. I'm just a, a spectator. I, I just, a spectator. I just have to listen and be there, present, and to put my knowledge to the to the to the test and to 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 them. You know, because they're they're telling me what they are, what they what's wrong, when it's wrong, how it's wrong. They are telling me everything. Yeah. You know, normally people know. People know what's wrong with them. They are in the bodies. Right. Right. This. It's not, right. you, you just have to be quiet. Just listen. <laughs> Doctors talk a lot. Yeah, they do. They do. And I, and I, I really wish they had more Jesus of your perspective. Christ. <laughs> you know, they need to no, do a podcast me, and just skip the practice. <laughs> no, they need, they need to shut the hell up, you know, just listen. Yeah. yeah. Listen. Well, the, I, the, it's the opposite. The, 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 the person should talk. You should be taking notes. Yeah. Well, I think the, a lot of people, the they thing. just want to be heard too. Like, I think that even opens the door being like lowers the resistance um, when they feel heard. And I mean, I can apply this to podcasting. I'm obviously I'm not a doctor, but if you just listen and they feel heard, then that changes the whole setting. They change because, at, well, when people are talking, they're also in a way they are healing. Yeah. Because the body and the mind when you're you're talking you're acknowledging it so yeah. the body says oh you already seen the symptom oh cool i can relax and the mind goes oh you seen okay you know you're in depression cool now i can relax so yeah. when you acknowledge when you talk and you acknowledge and you just when the aa meetings you say i'm an alcoholic yeah. this is the same when you acknowledge something, you're on a path of the healing. So this is really important. And this is a process of, of healing. So of course you need to talk. You need to feel heard because feeling heard is the same of the AA meetings. You always remember this. When you acknowledge the thing, the thing loses. It's like a balloon that you pop. So it yeah. loses the... And your mind stops building up stupidities. It's just, okay, this is this. And I'm telling to the doctor and I having, I'm having feedback. So the big, big drama, it's like a small drama now. Yeah. So this helps. Yeah. Helps the patient, helps the disease, helps the brain and helps the body because you just acknowledge it. Right. So right. it's really important. That is hard. Well, so if there is somebody, whether it's alcoholism or IBS or um, behavioral disorders, what do you think is like a good step one to like if, acknowledging, obviously, but even if they're before that, they're just kind of knowing they're uncomfortable and something's wrong and they don't know which way to list go. List of the symptoms. Normally I tell to my, I tell to my patient, list of the symptoms, list of the habits. Okay. List Ooh. of the symptoms next to the list of the habits. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So, so give us an example. Okay, so sleeping hours. Which time do I lay down? Which time do I wake up? 
do I sleep the whole night? Do I wake up to pee? What do I do with my night? Do I sleep a lot? Do I sleep well? Do I sleep whatever? Do I wake up tired? Do I wake up with energy? What's happening? Bowel. Do my bowels move every day? Yes, no. Why? What? What happens? Everything explained. And then what do I eat in a day? Everything explained. Water. Everything explained. Exercise. Everything explained. My hair. My nails. My vision. My mouth. Am I feeling dryness? No. My skin is okay. It's not okay. Am I feeling bloated? Am I, am I okay or not? If I'm um, um, a woman, my menses, pain, no pain. Pain is never normal, in, never in the human body. Okay? So this is really important to say. Uh, so the, the, my menstruation comes perfect, doesn't. What's happened to the blood? Which kind of color is the blood? And you have to see everything within yourself, your habits, your normal habits your habits of your body, not only your habits in your mind, your body movements. And then you see all of your symptoms and then you look at it. And normally you will find something sure. yourself. You don't need a doctor for that. Sure. <laughs> you will find something you say, mm, maybe I should change something. Something is not right. Yeah. Normally you just adjust. And then when you, you, you reach a level, then you cannot adjust. You go to the doctor, a good doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to go to different doctors if you, if one is not yeah. a doctor, again. You can try yes. a bunch. You're not obligated yeah, to it's be a capacity. service. And then it's a, it's an opinion, man. Find the one that, that fits you. It's yeah. really important because you have to fit your doctor. It's a I have I have patients from for sixteen years old. Uh, you know, patients who have been with me since forever and it's like a, a friendship relationship. You have to be able to tell him everything. And it's a it's a, a relationship that's really st strong, and you have to. It's really important to have Absolutely. a good doctor. <laughs> it's yeah. really important for you, and 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 it's important. I have two doctors, my doctors that I love, and it's really important because you you have to feel safe at some point, and you have to feel, to be able to talk to your doctor, to talk even even to disagree. A lot of times, you think yeah. it's okay. I I disagree a lot with my patients. We struggle and then we laugh and then we struggle a bit and then we laugh and they 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 they, they bring things to the appointments. I, I I I read because this is good for this. Why can't I do this? And then how can and I tell them and it's cool, it's a conversation. They are paying for my opinion, not from an ideology. Yeah. They they have to be able to talk and to have a conversation. And it's okay. Yeah. Well, and that, mm, it's cool. The power, like if you know, if you check in with your body and then you feel that power, yeah. I think that leads to the responsibility factor, which is the game changer. Yeah, because the health is, the, is for the people. It's, it's the people's health. And if they're saying to me, well, this is not working for me, it's my job to fix it and to understand what's wrong, but it's their job to tell me. Right. It's their job to be connected and to tell me mm, something is not right, even if they're not sure what. It's their it's their their thing to be connected and to to tell me in advance, not to tell me when it's everything is fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but, but again, you know? that's so hard to like get that early on. That's why I love to hear our young kiddos are seeing you and seeking yeah. out people like you because the trajectory is so different. And then it's not when it's so fucked up, man. If you see yeah. one something is wrong, you go and you said, yeah, it's wrong. Yeah, my menses are hurting. I'm not sleeping well. Oh, but it's okay not to go. No, it's not okay, man. You should sleep. Yeah. What? No, you should sleep. You should go to the toilet every day to poop. Yep. You should sleep eight to nine hours a day. Good sleep. And you should be able to control your thoughts and be okay with that. If you're, it's, these three things are not happening, something is wrong. Absolutely. And if it hurts have anything, you have to go to the doctor. Don't take a pill, man. It's hurting is your 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 body is telling you something is wrong. Right. It's not I need ibuprofen. No, it's something is wrong. 
I, well, that's when I leaned into turmeric, although sometimes I have to go yeah, stronger. Or tequila. And, I, I yeah, or te- tequila. <laughs> Depends on the day, but uh, we try and keep it pretty balanced. But some days, man, I just have to go for the Advil. But of course, I already know I'm overtraining. I know what the things I'm doing wrong, but it's hard to like keep that process. Your conscience, it's okay. I always tell my patients, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get drunk, go go get drunk, but be conscious. you right, right. Oh, then right. I then I have four days of diarrhea. Well, what do you think? Good diarrhea. You know that diarrhea. It's not a disease. It's just diarrhea from alcohol. Okay, so be cool. Don't totally. call me. Right, right. You have no time. <laughs> um, well, I'm curious. Do you? I have two trackers on right now, the Whoop and the Fitbit, and I wore an Aura ring. Do you like any of those by chance? But not normally, I don't use it because it stresses me a bit. Because it keeps telling me, it keeps telling me things and keeps telling me what to do. And I just, I just, I'm a rebel, you know, so I just, I I will do what I want to do. So yes, I did it. it. I did it to get back into training and because 42, I was ramping back up and I was just curious on the data, but I'm like you, I actually don't like all the Intel. Like I'm pretty like in tune and I know yeah. when, like I don't need something confirming, but it's in, been interesting to see how people work it and how my relationship with it has even been. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I recommend it, but I think they're good to compare. I don't think anyone's good by itself, but anyways, I also think it can be psychosomatic. If you see like, oh, you didn't get enough sleep. I saw it, but I actually felt okay that I don't like the Intel that is potentially misleading even though my bio signs are saying so so i don't know i just think it's 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 an interesting thing you know the the, <laughs> the things that i say to my patients is how you're feeling in the morning yeah two moments you have to see two hours after you go you you wake up and then 10 hours after you wake up how are you feeling okay i'm feeling okay then you're sleeping okay oh without okay. coffee okay coffee doesn't count coffee is drugs <laughs> coffee is caffeine yeah. is drugs coffee is drugs tequila is better no, yeah I'm I, I actually like well, I do think it is but again we'll leave it the is, medical advice is. to you actually, <laughs> no it's ca- caffeine is terrible and people is, they drink like ter- and in the U.S. oh my god oh yeah well, my patients there Jesus yes. bu- business and marketing and dollars and no, it's... no no I just said to them no you have to you you, you don't you cannot have coffee no I will die I said no you're not going to die I can assure you you're not going no I cannot work I cannot work yeah. without coffee. And then of course they are, they can work and they have actually more energy. Yeah. But they said to me, no, I cannot, I cannot know. I, you're, you're not understanding. And I said, yes, I'm, I'm understanding, but you have to, you have to leave the coffee. I cannot live without coffee. I, 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 I will not eat anything, but I have to drink. Well, it's like one hour discussion because of coffee in the U.S. Like, <laughs> I believe it. it. Well, we're, we're so, we're so, um, it's like just four coffees. And I said, no. Just four? No, oh my not, gosh. Just four. I said, just four? What are you crazy? You're <laughs> no. crazy, man. The wrong rituals. Those are the wrong rituals. The wrong, yeah. The bad habits. <laughs> yeah. That is, that, I believe like it. The, the power of wrong rituals. Yeah. Well, I, I think what, and again, this I've seen this with my own family. I know that if I can get them excited about one thing, like if I can just do it, I've seen with the bad habits, how hard they stick, then I know if I can just get the good ones in there, that they will stick. But getting to that process well, is hard. So difficult. Yeah. Yeah. When do you think is a good time for people to get your book? Do you think it's good for all ages or people right on the cusp of wanting to change? I think it's really important because the book is has a, a real a small test that you can do to see which kind of biotype you are, and you can do this since you're 12. So, and then you can see which foods are better for you and which kind of rituals are better for you, and it gives you a heads up which line you can you can go, which is easier I in a way. It. I love it. Yeah, I have <laughs> so many more questions for you because I could totally geek yeah. out on all the science because there's so many things to go, but I'm, I'm genuinely so excited that you are as young as you are and we have our young people seeking you out because again, I think that just changes our trajectory and mental health and unity totally. as a world uh, in so many things. Um, is there one piece of advice or a good quote or something you want to leave us with? Yeah, leave nine, uh, sleep nine hours a day. Okay. Don't eat, don't drink a thing. Ever? No and green tea? Ever. Oh, okay. Don't drink a faint. No, well, if you want a bit of matcha, it's okay. Okay. But caffeine, you can live it out. You have a lot of substitutes like cocoa, like a lot of things like matcha root, a lot of good things that you can. Today we have a big world, so we have a lot of things. Yeah. And then maybe the last thing is don't eat dairy. And I okay. Yeah. 
I did cut that out um got a while ago just because it's so inflammatory for me. I'll eat it here and there. Um for, but for you the most and part. For everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Terrible. All right. Um, and where do we find you? Hit us with handles, websites, where we can get this. So my website, maybe where I will t- I will send you and then you tell you. It's Tamara tr- slash Castello.com and then Instagram, Tamara double underscore, uh, underscore Castello. And you will find um, me. We'll, we'll of course That's post you. it all, but sometimes people are listening yeah. in the car or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I love what you're doing. It's my I- name. Yeah, Tamara, we'll find you one way. I really hope yeah. we cross paths in real life at some point. If you ever happen to be so in come to Lisbon. What, I, so oh, if I ever get down to Lipson, I would I would genuinely love to. And I'd love to see your clinic. I really do geek out on it's all this beautiful. human optimization stuff. It sounds amazing. What I could see online, it is actually um yeah. pretty amazing. It is. I love it. It is amazing. And now I'm I'm having a I'm building a house in in the um, in a farm. Oh, and the patients will be able to sleep there. No way. For okay. Cure. Yeah, yeah. For oh, cures, that's amazing. Like three or four, yeah, three or four days. Yeah. Are you going to like grow stuff days. and have animals and things? Yeah. And I will go grow patients too. Then. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I will help. We're on a whole other level. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, that, to, to get a bit of detox, the detoxification from all of the web and all of the things with uh, Wi Fi and everything. And it will be cool. Yes. I think they will love it. Okay. And from food and from drinks and from everything. Yes. That has been a long time it's goal really to have cool. some land and make my own. I had chickens at one point, yeah. but I'm kind of in the city. So anyway, I, I, to- will go, I will go on it. I have to have chickens. Yeah. They're awesome. Love, they're, yeah. They are awesome. They're super yeah. fun. I and, love chickens. Yeah. It's chickens a whole I will thing. have, rabbits I will have. From goats? My goats. I, I don't know goats, but ch- sheep, sheep I will have. Okay. I love it. Okay. I just have found them amazing. So yeah. Oh I'll my god, they're you. so hilarious. Yeah. Well, we'll and donkeys. <laughs> and donkeys. Two donkeys. Oh, okay. I love donkeys. In Portugal, they are in extension, so oh. we have to have donkeys. Yeah. It's, and you have to Important. have at least two, right? Yeah, two, of course. They are they're packed. Okay. They, okay. Yeah, they are packed. Yeah. <laughs> I Always love two. all these these rules. Yeah. <laughs> it should be kind of like humans too, but um, yeah. Well, True. keep up the good fight. I hope you, I know you're Thank good about you, self-care, you but I hope you keep, keep, you know, your own self fueled up because you're doing so much, but I really appreciate the time and energy and I hope we do a connect in person at some point. Yes. Let's come. Let's come to Lisbon. Yes. It's on. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.